have completed the secondary elements such as the eyes, the teeth, and the tongue, we're practically ready to merge everything to the paint room at this stage by going to the retopple menu and choosing which mode we want to utilize. Before I go any further though, I want to spend a little bit more time on auto retopology because Andrew has done a lot of work recently on this particular tool set to make it more usable in more situations. It's still a work in progress as of this recording, but he has released a few builds that uh, already show dramatic improvement. So I just wanted to go ahead and uh, help those who are wanting to get up to speed uh, with these new improvements uh, see how they work. This is a pretty good rule of thumb I find in my own experience. The more complex the model, the more sense it makes to use manual retopology. So uh, with all that said, auto retopology now makes more sense in more situations, but it is still not the ultimate tool for all situations. All right, so let's give this a shot. Um, what I did is I already made a number of attempts to just let auto retopology try and do its own thing uh, with this body object here. So I'm gonna hide all these other objects and isolate just the body layer in the Vox tree panel. So I'll alt click the visibility icon to isolate just the body. And so when I tried to run a auto retopo routine on this, it didn't necessarily freeze, okay, but it just kept calculating and calculating and I'd come back about 30 minutes later and it was still calculating and I would just quit the application using the task manager. So uh, again, I, I do honestly believe there is a threshold of complexity you just don't want to cross. Uh, in this regard, no matter what the polygon count is. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of complexity for that algorithm to undertake here in the head region and so on because there's all these open holes and so on, and uh, as well as the wings. So what might make sense is actually splitting this model up uh, into different segments and try auto retopology on one part and manual retopology on the other. So let's give this a try. Let's go into the voxel room here. And um, so what I have is I have this original layer. I cast it uh, so it's not taking up as much RAM. And I have this second duplicate that is actually a voxel layer. And I use this um, just kind of as a, a general reference. I created or I, I used that to split individual parts up. So what I have is an antenna, head, uh, wing tips, and then the body section. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and do something on the body alone. I also want to point out that if you try and uh, split things up, it's probably not a good idea to try to do it in surface mode. You want a good solid closed object. Okay, You don't want uh, to be working on a shell. And that means auto retopo is not a good idea on close. In my own experience. It's just the object is too thin. It's too open. It's not a good idea. Better stick with the strokes tool on that. Okay, so all right. Let's right click. Choose autopo. And uh, let's reduce it to 1.2 again. And let's try 9,000 polygons. And you want to be careful. Uh, on one attempt, I actually accidentally had uh, an extra zero in there. <laughs> it was really dense. So uh, just be careful as you're going through these new settings. You can set uh, the symmetry. In this case, I have a symmetry plane uh, just turned off from being visible, but I believe it's enabled. Nevertheless, even if I don't have it enabled, it will enable it here in this option. So and you can uncheck it to turn it off. Okay, and if this is a hard surface object, uh, it's going to use a little bit different algorithm and you have different quality settings. We'll look at that later. 
but this is not a hard surface object, so I'll leave that unchecked. And uh, I'm not going to voxelize, I'll just leave uh, decimated checked. And we'll hit OK. Let's go ahead and use this opportunity to paint select areas where we want a little bit more density. And I find it this actually works fairly well on things like this, like claws or teeth. Okay. And I would do that in this particular section here, but I'll leave that undone for now. Just these claws. Hit next. And it's keeping the guides that I previously used. I could clear those if I need, or I could smooth them. That's a little bit too strong. I'm going to go in and select that, highlight that uh, particular loop or that spline. I'm going to hit the delete key. I'm going to recreate that. With spline points density, I'm going to bring that up to about 250 or so. I'm going to redo that. Make sure it has enough control points. Okay, now I might try and smooth. Looks good. And I might add one extra guide right here. And I'm also going to place some guides right here on the edge just to make sure. This might make it easier for me to clean up later on. And I noticed I had a little bit of a mess earlier uh, right in this area where these areas intersect. So So we might put one right here. I don't think I necessarily have to. 3D coat uh, detects edge angles, but still, just to reinforce that. And I might just go ahead and connect that up. This one. Might be putting too many guides down. We have this new little visual guide or tips that Andrew recently gave regarding these uh, new improvements to the AutoRead topology tool set. And uh, he has some tips here for uh, applying guides and so on. Don't intersect guides. And don't put them too close to each other. Uh, don't use too many guides. Basically, don't micromanage. Uh, no contradiction between guides. Close guides should be parallel or perpendicular to each other. If you see a mess somewhere on your resulting mesh, you may want to delete that mesh and restart auto retopology again and try to apply some guides uh, in that particular area or a guide in that area. No contradiction with symmetry plane. Basically, try and keep all your guides on one side of the symmetry plane if you can. In this case, um, this loop will be fine, I think, at the very edge of the model, but you might just uh, make a one-sided guide here as well. So, 
with that said. just delete that one try and keep it simple if I can and I think I'll do the same thing with this just delete that and I'm going to bring the spline points density down actually I'll just hold the control key <clears throat> and this way I can just plot down points as I need them Okay, so I think that's good. And if I can, I'm going to try and save just in case it bogs down on me. Um, yeah. All right, so let's give us a whirl. Okay, so it's finished, and as you can see, it did a relatively good job. Um, we definitely had some issues right here, and I'm not quite sure why. I guess because it was trying to terminate uh, some of these loops. But it's practically all quads. So, probably had to use the brush tool maybe try and clean that up a bit same thing here now I find that uh, a little tip here that if I turn auto snapping off and with the brush tool hold the shift key and so this will smooth out any snapping going on so snapping is not going to interfere right now um, turn auto snapping back on And you can see around the claws, it did a, a fairly good job of giving me enough polygons to uh, maintain that shape. It looks pretty good. So yeah, overall, I'm fairly pleased with that. Um, I probably should have applied a guide right here on the very edges so that it doesn't spill over like this. But I could probably just fix that easy enough. Undo. Turn auto snapping off. Actually, what I might do is just go in and use the select tool, and clear selection, and use freeform lasso. Oops, with auto selected, using a freeform lasso, I have to make sure to check the mode I want to use. Switch to faces. I can just delete those. You know, and it, it did a really good job even on the tail. I probably should have paint selected that to get a little bit more uh, polygonal density here in the tail, but that's fine. Let me go back to the brush tool. Auto snapping turned off. I can kind of pull that out. And then I turn it back on. I can just tap that area to get it to snap. Hold the shift key and just kind of lightly tap. 
these areas. And I might go in later on and delete some of these and just connect them back up. That should be easy enough to do. But uh, for the demonstration purposes, it did a fairly good job. And uh, I'll do the same thing here as I did. I'll just delete the areas that are uh, close to the other parts. And then just try to connect them back up. Okay, so let's go to Select. I should be in auto mode, reduce my brush size. It's got me in faces mode. It remembered the last one I had selected. So let's inspect this a little bit more. Okay. So I need my hotkey for edge loop. <clears throat> Again, select faces. Delete. Faces select. I can just kind of paint select all of these. Make sure I didn't accidentally select some on the other side. Delete. Okay. So yeah, I'm really surprised. It really did a, a fairly remarkable job, considering it's a an algorithm that's doing all the guesswork. Okay, I'll stop the recording right here and we'll pick it up in the next video working on the wingtip, uh, trying to incorporate that as well. So, we'll see you next video. Thank you for watching.